Okay. So I just want to thank God for this morning, for the message he has given us. Uh, I am praying that this message will minister to everyone that will come across this sermon. Amen. To minister to everyone and uh, everyone to take the necessary step to change his Christianity. Amen. Because the Christianity we have right now around is wrong. Because you cannot put your faith in something, a teaching, a doctrine, waiting on God and God is not responding. No, God is faithful. It's because what we are putting our faith in is not the truth. If it's the truth, okay, it's the truth. The what we are perceiving is the same thing God wants us to perceive. God will always respond. Amen. So, God bless you. The title is that trust Jesus. Amen. The right way, or trusting Jesus the right way, or trust Jesus the right way to have your problem solved. Amen. Solve and sooner. Amen. Sooner you trust Jesus the right way, sooner all your problem will be solved. Amen. Sooner you trust Jesus the right way, sooner all your problem will be solved. Many people are struggling in many domains because they don't know God. Amen. Because they don't know God. The worst. In the, the worst is that we have Christians and pastors that are struggling with problems, sicknesses, everything, but the things is not going. But these people believe in God, the most high God. They believe in the Bible. I mean, they believe in what is written in the Bible. I mean, but still, nothing is happening. So there is a problem. But we are going to find a solution today. Hallelujah. Good. These Christians have affliction, difficult situation that they don't even know that some of the source of the, those problems are spiritual. Because they're supposed to be spiritual. Amen. But if you are not spiritual, you can never know God. But if you don't know God, just know that you are not spiritual. You can know the Bible. But you don't know God. You cannot about God, but you don't know God. Like if every prayer, I can say any prime minister right now, you know him, you know his public life uh, on television, on the media, everything, but you don't know him personally. When you live with somebody, you know the person, you know the character, everything. Amen. Okay. So Isaiah 43, verse 10. But you are my witness, O Israel, said the Lord. You are my servant. You have been chosen to know me. Believe in me and understand that I, I alone am God. You have been chosen to know me. Number one. Amen. Because if you don't know him, how can you hear him? How can you be sure that he is the one talking? You need to know him. You need to believe in what he's telling you. And you need to understand him then you can know that him alone is God. This is what is lacking in Christianity. Amen. There is no other God. There is never have been and there will, ne there will never will be. That's Isaiah 43 verse 10. He said, until you know God and know his voice or how he talks, there is no way you can follow him. Amen? There is no way you can follow him. Therefore, there is no way you can have faith. If the faith you are having is not what God is saying or is not coming from God, your faith is empty. Amen? Your faith is not divine. Amen? The mission of Jesus is to save all those who believe in him. Amen? All those who believe in him and live, uh, all those who believe in him and live righteously from all their problems, all their problems, all their weaknesses. Amen? You may not even have a problem, but the fact that you can die. Jesus wants you even to 
it will, he died for us not to die again. Even the death that we have today, pastors are dying, prophets are dying, people are dying. God does not want us to die at all. Amen. The fear of God is what is lacking. If you fear God, you have the fullness of the spirit of fear of God. You will never sin. As you never sin, people will look at you like you are radical. Some people will look at you like you are mad because the ways of God you are following are opposite to their way and you will never die because you will be righteous. Not just righteous, you will be perfect. You will not be sinning. Amen. So, let's go. Psalm 34, verse 19 to 22. He said, many are the afflictions of the righteous. Many of them are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord delivered them, delivered him out, out of all of them, out of them all. He guards all his bones. Not one of them is broken. Evil shall slay the wicked, and those who hate the righteous shall be condemned. Amen. The Lord redeemed the soul of his servant, redeemed the soul of his servant, and none of those who trust in him shall be condemned. So look at what he's talking about here. We are talking about the righteous. And we say righteousness is what? When you are righteous, God declares you righteous. Like somebody like David, all your heart, love God, nothing else. But it doesn't mean that something that is filthy will not be coming to your mind. Something that you see that upset you cannot be making you reacting in your mind to wish bad for some people. Still, your heart love God. Automatically, your heart goes on God in everything about God. You are righteous. So God will be delivering from the affliction. But God wants you to be perfect, then you have no more problem. Amen? But now you need to have the purity that comes and your mind is completely pure then you can move to perfection. But now, the faith, we have the fullness of faith when we move to perfection. Because when you move to perfection, you don't more living, but Christ dictating everything or God dictating everything you are doing to you. Amen? But I'm not going to take it that high. What we are, we want to solve the problem. I'm not taking it to, just leave it. Okay, we are going to leave it at the level of righteous people. Okay, at the level of people who have faith. Okay, okay, what we read right now in uh, Psalm 34 is true that the, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. That is true. But today, some people are lacking the fruit of the womb for years. And some people who even die, they don't have, they never have it. Some people have some spiritual problem, it will never go. Some people have a lot of problems in church, pastors, everybody, even the people of the world. But the people who can say that they don't believe in Christ. Because when you believe in Christ and you put your trust in Christ, there's no way your problem will remain. But the problem is that you need to know Christ the true Christ that died upon the cross and you need to recognize his voice and when he speaks, he will do it. Okay? Okay. Now we are going to moment of truth. Eh? But now God said he's going <laughs> to deliver us from all our affliction. But now let's look at this. He said, Jeremiah 29, verse 11 to 14. He said, for I know the plans I have for you, say the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and hope. In those days, when you pray, I will listen. In those days, when you pray, I will listen. That means when you walk in the plan, uh, you align with the plan, then when you pray, I will listen. But right now, I'm not listening. I don't know if you see it. I'm reading it again. Say, for I know the plans I have for you, say the Lord. Say the Lord, there are plans for good, not for disaster, to give you future and hope. In those days, when you pray, I will listen. If you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. Hey, you will find me. And I will be found by you, say the Lord. I will end your captivity and restore your fortune, everything I plan for you. So that means what? That means if we see God wholeheartedly, 
we will find him. When we find him, he will instruct us on why we are finding him. We will go through the plan. And as we go through the plan, so we build that intimacy with him. Then when we ask him for anything, he can respond. Amen. But now, if we know that God has a good plan of us, of, upon us, but God knows as well when you are righteous, amen, when you are righteous, every of your affliction, he will deliver you from it. Why now Christian have affliction? Christian have problems? Pastors have problems? Even prophets have problems? Amen. I'm, call, I'm going by the title. I'm going just by the title. Have problems, but the problems are not finishing. It's because our faith is wrong. Our faith is wrong. Our God as well is not the God we say we are worshipping. I'm going to tell you. It's not the God we say we are worshipping. The God, the God we are worshipping, no, we want to worship, is not the one we are worshipping. Amen? You're going to get it. Many Christians are struggling, and the Lord cannot save them. I'm, I'm not saying the, the Lord cannot save them. Why? Because the law is perfect. He is a righteous God that is perfect. So if the conditions are not fulfilled, he, he, cannot, he cannot do it because he can't do anything that's wrong. Amen? The Lord cannot save them from their problem because they don't know God. They don't know God and they don't hear him as they have never been taught how to listen to his voice. They don't know God. They don't hear God as they have never been taught how to listen to God. You can't listen to this God and God will say, I am doing this. And it will never happen. It will happen. Amen. Whatever God says, he does. Amen. We need to know his voice interacting with him to lead and to be led by him out of our problem and affliction. He is the one who should lead us out, out of our problems and affliction. Amen. He said, my sheep, listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they will never perish. No one can snatch them away from me. For, amen, for my father, has given them to me. And he is more powerful than anyone else. No one can snatch them from my father's son. My father and I are one. So all these statements are true. But I believe we all are aware that Christians are killed by witches. Pastors are killed by witches. Pastor, a Christ, a, a, which is goes into churches and sometimes they are disturbing the, the service. Okay? They are disturbing the service, which is close, close, close churches. A lot of things happening. Why? Because we are not loving God the way we're supposed to love God. Amen? And for God to reveal himself to us, for us to be one with God. Amen? So, so they misuse the problem. Now the answer is coming. Why all this and happiness is coming? The misuse of the Bible and all the self righteousness, or all the self righteousnesses that many are presenting like the true, the, the only one righteousness is what is confusing the church and the level where many have given up. Amen. To the to the level where many have given up the faith and uh, are, uh, are staying home, they are not going to church anymore. Amen? They went to church believing in what the pastors, when people have problems, eh, they will go to church and they will believe on what the pastor says about their problem. That were not were coming from the Bible, not from, uh, not from God. Hallelujah! I'm saying something that is very very key here. You can come to church when you come to church, and you say you have a problem, or somebody invites you to church. Say, come, God will do it. 
or God can do it. Even when you say God can do it, it's better than saying God will do it. Amen? Because until God tells you that he's going to do it, don't say God will do it. Just say God can do it. Amen? Because when you are saying God will do it, that means God told you that you're going to do it. Amen? So faith comes from what we hear from God. What is a faith comes from the word of God, the word of God spoken by God, not the word written by God. The word written by God is, the, the whole Bible is a testimony. It's just testimonies. So right now, I can you tell, we give testimony to encourage each other that God can do your case, can handle your case as well. But it doesn't mean that God is promising that he can do your case. But now when you see God until God speaks, it's going to be, it's going to be done. Alibia, let me go into but now what is happening let's go what is happening or maybe i should leave this note and preach this in amen what is happening christian goes to church believing that prophets and apostle can solve their problem not god when you see how God is mo moving in power with the prophet, with the apostle, with the pastor, whosoever, the thing when they go to church, that person can solve the problem. They, you will never, none of them come, including me. Only God can solve our problem. But now how it happen? You pastor and uh, apostle, you are just a vessel prepared for the power to, for God to flash through you. Amen. To flash through you. But now when God speaks and you speak it, God will do it. But when God does every, he said, everything he, he, he does, he said it. He always said it. If he doesn't say it, he's not going to do it. Amen. So I'm saying this for Christians to start seeking intimacy with God. Because in the Old Testament, as the prophets were the only one within prophet and king were the only one within what the Holy Spirit was living, amen. Was living when God wanted to do something, God will speak to them. When God speaks to them, when they speak it out, God will do it. Amen. In the New Testament, now God is in every Christian, so everybody needs to be enrolled in the school of the Holy Spirit to know how to hear God. Once you know how to hear God, you know how to see God. When you know how to see God, then when you uh, there's any case you ask God, when God spoke, you know that God is going to deliver. Until God speaks, God will never deliver. Until God speaks, God will never deliver. He will speak about every single case. Amen. But now the people we call apostle prophet today is because they have prayed a lot. Because in the Old Testament before, people don't have any Bible. And they don't have any Bible. They rely only on long prayer and fasting. As they rely on long prayer and fasting, so they have the body, they had the body transformed. As they had the body transformed, so God can be speaking to them, they can be hearing God. As they hear God, they repeat it. They hear God, they say it. They hear the word. God is in action. But in the Old Testament, the Bible has been given to us for to, um, to teach us the ways of God. So when you teach, they taught the ways of God to be inspired by the life of the prophet, then you too, you can do it. But now we look at it, and now we are reading the Bible and thinking that this is what God said you want to do with us. It's all true. Let me put it this way. Isaiah prophesied that a virgin will be what? Will, 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 will give birth to Jesus. Amen? Who got pregnant and give birth to Jesus. Do you think Ma, uh, Mary was the only virgin that was in Israel the time uh, Mary got pregnant? No. It was not the only one. So there are many prophecies. If you have no align with God, qualify to receive the mantle that is needed, God will not pick you and use you. The prophet is there, there's no problem. There's no, uh, what, how do you call it? There's no name on it. My name is Kenneth. Kenneth is not written in the Bible, but I'm serving God today.
Amen. So what I'm telling you, I can even give testimony. Two major, many, many testimony. I've been, I've been involved in many, many battles. Even they, I, I told you, they come and took me. Me, I thought this is the angel that come and took me. I look, I look at the guy and say, no, this guy cannot be angel because the guy is dark, black. Even he gives him his, his name. Uh, one of the the top, uh, I won't call him which, but those who do mysticism like a, a top in the Freemasonry things like that. Okay, the guy was from Burkina Faso. He took me. We were going like this. We, we were on the sea. We entered the sea. We went to one of the great headquarters of the devil. They wanted to keep me there. Angels came from heaven, scattered the whole place and took me. He said, none of them, nobody can snatch them out of my hand. Recently, 2024, they took me to the second heaven. Satan himself was there. They couldn't keep me there. The second time, the minister, the angel of the ministry, that bull eagle, you see, he came and rescued me out of the, the hand. But why God allowed them to take me? The God, he allowed them to take me so I can go and see those things, what is happening there. But you know, he has a plan. You know that he just wants me to see the place and then he can rescue me back. Alia, because all my heart, everything I do is God. So when you understand what we are taking, I'm telling you today, you don't need to be a pastor. Amen. Let's go. Where are we? First Peter. 1, 10 to 11. He said, this salvation was something even the prophet wanted to know more about when the prophesizer about the gracious salvation prepared for you. Amen. They wondered what time or situation the spirit of Christ within them, they are in the Old Testament, the spirit that we see them was talking about. When he told them in advance about Christ's suffering and the great glory afterward, his great glory afterward. So the Passover, amen. And um, amen. Since the Passover, the Spirit of God uh, is entering every person that confessed Jesus as personal savior. Amen. From the Passover. The Spirit of God is not just God. That, that's why he, he said God will pick you. God pick God will pick people as he wish and things like that. That's what used to happen. But now when you hold yourself, you accept Jesus. Amen. The Spirit of God will enter you. Amen. The Spirit of God will enter you. It is only leads, but will never lead you. Hallelujah. I, I, get this data by the way. The spirit, if you believe in Christ and you accept the spirit of God, it will never lead you. The spirit of God start leading you the day you start taking him as your you are taking him as your personal Lord. I start taking him as your personal Lord, then he can speak to you, knowing that you will accept and you will follow. He will not even speak to you because he knows your heart. He knows that you are not going to listen. Because today, many people listen to God audibly. Hear God audibly. Why, why not everybody can hear God audibly? It's not everybody that has not loved God enough for God to go, get that close to them. Amen? When you are praying, you ask a question to God. And God will tell you, in 30 days, wait five days, I will do this, this year, this how what's going to happen. Or sometimes God come with you, we are one, and you are one, God will show you, to, hey. Hallelujah. So, brothers and sisters, see God. When you see God, and you are asking questions, God, but now when you, you read the Bible, there are things that are general, that shall not lie. Amen. That, 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 uh, that shall not commit adultery, that shall not fornicate, that shall not do this, that all these things. Take it with all your heart. As you are obeying them, then God knows that, uh uh, even if you are obeying these ones and you are making every effort not to say no to it and you want to respect this one, then God will come close to you and start now speaking to you. 
Amen. Some people are saying, oh, I just want God to talk to me. God to talk to me. But my friend, there's a, a lot of things God has said already. You are not taking it account. You are living your life the way you want. And you now, you have a major problem. You want God to talk to you. So when you, you finish to resolve it, resolve that problem, then you go back to whatever you want. Because your righteousness is not in you. They resolve to obey God. They resolve to stick to the word of God. They resolve to follow God. They resolve to make God your personal Lord. is not there. I'm not talking just about Christian. I'm talking about pastors. I'm talking about even prophets. Because me, I see some prophet, apostle, great, when I say great, what you call great in, on earth are people who are popular. Popular people, I'm, I see them lying. Manipulating people. When they are talking to me, I can see. I say, no, no, that's not true. Amen. But when you fear God, you will never manipulate anybody. When you fear God, you never lie to anybody. When you fear God, you can grow to perfection. Amen. So, those who are used to him, amen, when you know him, okay, I say those who take him as their personal Lord are those who are taught how to listen to, their, to his voice and follow him. Amen. He say uh, uh, whatever he said to them they listen amen so because you take him because when he, you just accept okay you keep his word the word that is in the bible you keep those that you can hear uh, that you know is obvious that shall not lie is clear amen everybody can get it out of your your knowledge of good and bad you know what you that one you can understand it and you are keeping it seriously then the holy spirit will move close to you and start now giving you personal instructions. And that because your problem are needed personal instructions. Amen. Your problem needed personal instructions. Amen. Because today the church is taking the Bible as God. The Bible is not God. I'll keep on saying the Bible is not God. God voice is the God use the Bible to speak. But you can read the Bible and understand something that is not the will of God. You can use the Bible to do something or to say something that is your own plan. And even the Bible is what people use to manipulate other people. When I'm using the Bible to manipulate, how can I say God is talking? God is not talking. So the Bible is not God. God will not manipulate anybody. God will tell the truth. But not the person who had the fear of God. God will speak to you personally, distinctively, and you listen. As soon as you speak it out, everybody will see the action immediately. Amen. It's like, uh, okay, I can give this uh, example. Uh, Jessica is here. She is my witness. Last time, she has a cousin who is autistic. Well, they were saying, oh, let the, the, the child come so God can heal the child. But till the day the child was coming to the church, I never heard anything. I told her straight away. I never, God never spoke anything to me. I've been praying for weeks. I would say months, weeks. But for her, but they never did they, they came and they left. It's nine days later that God spoke to me. So if God does not speak to you, even that day when they come, the power of God is hitting people in the church, healing people, doing things on people. But I pray for the church, nothing happened. Why? Because God have not spoken, have not spoken yet. So Christianity is hearing God and following. God won't create the whole world to lead the whole world. Christ come now for us to know that him is the best, the best for us. 
God is the best for us. Christ is the mediator between man and God. He is the best for us. So anything we are going through, if we can listen to Christ, we can come to Christ, listen to Christ. Not just coming to Christ. You come to Christ and you listen to Christ. When you listen to Christ, Christ will resolve the problem. To the level you yourself, you need to now trust Christ enough and give up completely whatever is in the world. Then you see that all your afflictions are behind you. None can even come. Before they come, God will tell you. And even he tell you, he's telling that, he, before they come, he's telling you, but if you go from, uh, listen, uh, righteousness, you enter purity and perfection, none of them will come. None of them. Hallelujah. So, what are we? In our days, we have some churches where their pastors and prophets are moving in power. This because they fasted and prayed for hours and months as, pa as pastors used to do in the Old Testament. And God speaks to them about cases because the people come uh, before uh, about cases before the people come to church. That's why you can see that somebody will come and say, when he was praying before uh, for the service, he will come and say, uh, he, he will see a vision. When he come to church, he just remember, God showed me this. You said it, and make us, you see the power, you see the power. So if God does not speak, there's no salvation. There's nothing. There's no healing. God has to speak. That's why everything depends on you who have problem, your relationship, your heart, everything with God. If you, you don't fear God, you, you don't care, you don't listen, God will not speak. Thousand people of people are coming to church. God will show five and ten or ten cases or thirty out of thousand to the his seven. Why not you? Why others? Why not you? So when you think about all these things, you know that uh -uh, everything does not depend on the pastor. That does not depend on the prophet. He, Amen. Regardless of the, the how much God is moving within the power, it doesn't depend on him. It depends on God and it depends on you. Your heart, your resolve to obey God, how you because many people want to come to church just to be healed and go to their to their worldly life. No, God wants to control the earth. God wants everybody back. He created you for you to be, belong to him. And the only way you belong to God is the way you live by his ways. But the best place they can teach you how to live by his way is in church. So that's why God wants you to come to church and to belong to church. Amen. But now if God sees that us, sometimes if you are like a, we had a pastor that come from uh, this in Canada. He's a pastor. But he, his heart is on God. Is on God. So instantly, since that was problem for years, bam, down. But now somebody whose heart is not on God yet, God will do little. But now if you know that you trust God, that, ah, if God had done this, amen, if God had done this, that means that God can do it. Amen. God is in this place. So now you come and you give your heart and you are seeking God. You change your own life. The more you are changing, God trusts you. God will change everything. I can tell you, you can even I challenge everyone. I don't know if you are you, I'm challenging or I'm challenging myself. I don't know how I'll put this one. There's no sickness. There is no disability. There's nothing on earth that God cannot fix or God cannot heal or God cannot change. Amen. Cerebral palsy. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, how do you call it? Down set on everything. God can change everything. Everything. Whatever medicine or nobody, medicine, juju, whatever cannot heal, God can heal all of them. Amen. Let me get, get let me put it better. God can heal all of them in the two set free. In my in the church, you, you put me to lead. God can heal all of them there. All we are asking. Come and surrender to God. Let your life change. It could be deliverance. Could be, God can give everything. He can do it. But now when you come, okay, 
we are me i can't see in your heart and let's go open my eyes to see but if yourself you have resolved that you want to change you want to listen to the sermon you want to listen to the teaching now to start living the way god wants you to live and find out what god plans upon your life for you to live okay yeah for you to live in that to reach that destiny and live that way and to do that way and that is amen whatever it is amen me i will petition god God will talk and God will do it. Until he talks, there's nothing. Until he speaks, there's nothing. That's the problem we are having in Christianity. The Bible is not God. The voice of God through the Bible is God. The voice of God, when you close the Bible, is God. The true voice of God is what we need to hear. Christianity is hearing God and acting. It's not reading a book and picking whatever you like, whatever you don't like, you throw it away, whatever you like, you take it, you want to do You are not fooling God. Nobody can fool God. We are fooling ourselves. Amen? Alia? So, he said it very well. As we see right now, the Christian in, in the Old Testament, the prophets had the Holy Spirit in them. But uh, and then he said, "Surely the Lord, uh, I mean Amos three seven. Surely the Lord God does nothing, does nothing, does nothing, does nothing. Even healing, whatever, does nothing unless He reveal His secrets. So revelations, what He want to do." How we want to do it to his servant, the prophet. So now forget about any man called prophet, any man called pastors, any woman called pastor. Forget about all of them. But now you, Christian, as far as you have the Holy Spirit in you, God can use you as well powerfully. If you go, you are you register to the spirit of the Holy Spirit, the school of the Holy Spirit, you learn how to hear God how to obey God, how to follow God, and the right usage of the Bible is handed to you, and you get it, and you grab it. I am telling you, you become a pot of solution for many. Hallelujah. So the church need to put their member in the school of the Holy Spirit. Alia, the school of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will lead us until we know him very well. We know his voice. Now, as we know his voice and all the Holy Spirit is telling us we are obeying, then Christ will come and reveal himself to us. But now when he reveals himself to you, it doesn't mean that you will come and vision just see Christ like that. No, no, no. Christ hasn't given himself like that. When Christ comes, it's true. He comes and appears to you. But now we start showing you who he is. Different dimensions of Christ. Amen. It is by revealing who he is, the different dimension of Christ. This way I learn how he can enter the mind of the Father to see what is the mind of the Father. Okay, let me read it. Say this, it can make sense to you. We say God say what? Uh, he will tell some people that he doesn't know them. But Christ, God, God the Father, hein, he has a pure heart. He doesn't want his heart to be this. So one day God took me. I was in his mind. Okay, I was in the brain of the, the Father, the big, the one, the huge one. I was in his brain. Now I was seeing the earth, how people move in the earth. When I see the earth, I saw the earth. I saw people, I saw light in the Christians. The light is yellowish, yellowish, because the, the light of God is on beam in them. So that light, so they were moving on the earth like that. So he will only control them, see them, see what they are doing. Because what they are doing is according to his word. So these people can give him joy. He can plan, send the angel to come and help them and to do this and like that. But now those who are living in darkness, they are moving as well, but they are moving dark, 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 dark. They are all dark, dark, dark. It's like a black. They are dark, you know, not dark, they are black. <laughs> like uh, this, I'm worried. They are like that, moving like that. You see like shadow that they are moving. Women, being, all of them are women. Being, they are moving like that. God's, God's looking at them and doesn't see, see, see them. For them to be doing things and be troubling his heart and things like that, be giving him pain. No, he keep his peace for him to keep his peace. So when you are a Christian and you are not living by his word, I'm not saying the Bible, 
Because we have many, many doctrines coming from this Bible. So a wrong doctrine, you are still in the dark. Amen. But the self-righteous letter we have right now is like me, the spirit of revelations. Okay. When we have the spirit of uh, wisdom, revelations, and knowledge, because you, have, you, need, you need to give you the spirit of wisdom. When you are curious, you are asking questions, you are observing, you are studying, then you give you the revelation to know what is the proof, what is the reality about what you are asking the question for. Then now the revelation he is giving you is what is going to build the knowledge. But now the revelation, some come to your mind, some will take you in the realm, when it's taking you in the realm, you can, and, uh, uh, you can teach his duty, then you know the reality. Like the way I say, I'm being in his, uh, his brain, uh, his mind. Okay, I've been to his mind, I've been to his heart, okay, everything, but I'm not going to give those. Things. But now, this is where my strength is. This work here, I have been giving more. That's the, okay, those three spirits because holiness, uh, wisdom, revelation, and knowledge. This is where I've been giving more. But now, the other one, the other seven for the other, the rest of the seven spirits of God is the fear of God. The more you fear God, the more God knows that when He talk to you, you can listen. So He start giving you the spirit of counsel. That this where the prophets have, okay? That uh, counsel ever when you have the spirit of counsel, then when you speak, now God is asking that you have the spirit of mind. Amen. So you can see the seven spirits, okay? But now uh, the knowledge side, uh, the knowledge and teaching side, I have more than the. The cancel side, the spirit, the spirit, uh, cancel and might and power. I have more than that. But now I will not say every to everyone, the best is to have this. No, there's no best. Every people seem to impose to on others what they think is they have as the best. No, there's no best. God give something to you. And you are lacking in one. For you to humble yourself to your brother that have more than you, then you can learn from him. When you learn his revelation, he's teaching everything so you can grow that side. But now you, if in your pride you don't want to grow that side, you are saying that your own is the best. Everybody wants to impose whatever he received the most. This is why we are having the clash. Amen. We so, we're supposed not to impose anything on anybody. Your own, you acknowledge your own. You hold the tax and you are growing it. But now the one you know that somebody has more than you, go and submit to that person. Because the same thing in marriage is what you call complement, uh, complementing each other. In marriage, that's why we have this problem. When you are doing something best, you want your wife to do the same thing. When the wife is doing something best, he wants you to do it. No, it's because she is weak in that side and you are strong in this side and you are weak in this side and she's strong in the other side that God put you together so you can be complaining each other. The same thing with the body of Christ. This is what we need to know. If you know that, you are not against anybody but you just know that is rich side. But now the revelation you have, what you see, how you see life, how you perceive things, that's why you are strong. This is what you communicate to him. Once he catch it, does it. Homeless people, lawless people, uh, abandoned people, even those who are who, are, who have many deaths, that means they cannot even organize their life. When David took them, share revelation with them teaching and revelation with them, they become the mighty man, the mighty men of David. So everybody can become mighty. Everybody can reach the level of Christ. Just submission to the teaching of God. Submission to the ways of God. That's it. So if we are struggling as a Christian today, it's because we have no resolve in our heart with the spirit of humility to humble ourselves and to listen to Christ. But no, no, first word, Christ will not come from anywhere to talk to you first. He need a man like me or you or somebody else or a woman, somebody who had the spirit of God, who is working under the spirit of God to teach you. Amen. So let's read those scriptures quickly and we'll finish here. It said, John 14, verse 15 to 18. It said, if you love me, Obey my command. If you love me, obey my command. And I will ask my father, and he will give you another advocate 
who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads, who leads into all truth. Amen. The world can never receive him because he isn't looking for him. Because he isn't looking for him. So if you are a Christian, you are not looking for the Holy Spirit. You are not doing anything to seek God. Amen. You will not have it. That's why our struggle, our affliction continue. God cannot be in us, within us, and grow with a certain level, a certain thing we are not. Those affliction are not in heaven because God, people are surrounded by God and his ways. That's why he said, seek the kingdom of God first and its righteousness, then everything shall be given to you. Amen? Hallelujah? So, Let's go to John 14. Uh, 14, I read verse 15 to verse 17. But let's go to verse 19. It says, soon the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Since I live, you also live. When I am raised to life again, you will know that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. And I am in you. Those who accept my commandment and obey are the one who loves who love me. And because they love me, my father will love them, and I will love them and reveal myself to each of them, not to each of them. That means you every you will start having encounters with Jesus. You will know Jesus in and out. He will come to you as he is able to change himself into a lion. He come to you appear to you as a lion. He will come to you as a colon of fire. He will come to you as a wind. He will come to you as a human being. He will come to you in a glorified, glorified body. Every aspect of Jesus, you Jesus will reveal everything to you. And then he will pass you to the Father. And the Father as well now start revealing every aspect of him to you. So the time you do all, you know the Holy Spirit. You know the, the Father, you know the Son, and you know the, 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 this, this thing. The Father, who can do whatever against you? You, are, you will be one with them. Amen? You will be one with them. Hallelujah. So let's go. Matthew 11, verse 27. He said, my Father has entrusted everything to me. No one truly knows the Son except the Father, and no one truly knows the Father except the Son, and those to whom the, the Son chooses to reveal the Father. So you can know the Father. You can see the Father and live. Not just seeing the Father. You enter the Father. You go in the Father. The Father, you know how the Father operates. Different aspects of the Father. That's because if your doctrine is true, you will be growing, okay? And contest, intimacy, continue, 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 continue. Amen? So let's go. John 14, 22 to 27 now. He said, Judah, when he said, Jesus said, you're going to reveal himself to people who love him, okay? People who lost, just people who lost him. Not everybody. Earlier, not everybody. So it's, it's clear that we need to understand this. It's not because we are in a church and we want to give everything to everybody. No. Those who deserve it, those who are moving, doing the actions that prove that, are making the effort that prove that they deserve it, you give it to them. Those who are not doing it, work for them. Then when they are ready, they will come and get it. Amen. This is what I said, Judah, not the Iscariot, not Iscariot, but the other disciple with uh, that name, said to him, Lord, why are you going to reveal yourself only to us, not to the whole world at large? Not to the whole world at large. He responded. He said, Jesus replied, all who loves me will do what I say. If God instituted a meeting or give instructions for a church or a member or whosoever, those who obey are those who who meet God is those the Holy Spirit will minister to. Amen. He said, All who loves me will do what I say. My father will love them, and I will come and make home in and, and we will come and make home in with each with each of them. Anyone who does who doesn't love me will not obey. Will not obey. And remember, 
My word are not my own. I am what I am telling you are in what I'm telling you is from the Father who sent me. So the more the Christian, Christian, or the whole human, uh, humanity or human being in general, we know Christ, the mediator between God and humanity, the more we will be able to follow his instruction that will take us out of our trouble, our afflictions, everything. And uh, even what the, uh, what you, how, how do I call them? The witches, those the devil have taken in his camp, are doing the, all of them, including the devil, they cannot do anything against you. God is the most high. God is the most powerful. Amen. So many people, the way we are taught is to read the Bible. That's not wrong. But you must use the Bible the way you should use it. You must listen to the Holy Spirit. But first of all, you need somebody who understands the Bible the way it's supposed to be. To teach you the basic. Why is teach you the basic? You build on that foundation. Your, your house can stay, uh, can, can, can last, can resist everything that comes. But now when somebody gives you the Bible, Amen. And uh, it gives you a doctrine that is wrong. Amen. A doctrine that is wrong. You build on that doctrine that is wrong. That foundation is not from Christ. Any crisis come, bam, you are gone. That's why it's very, very important. If you are pastor, pray. If you are pastor, fear God. If you are pastor, don't say anything that is not of God. Or you are not sure that. Is God that is saying it. Amen. Okay. I will let me pray. Father, I want to thank you for the life of everybody that listened to this sermon up to here, this level, up to the end now. I am praying as you open their mind and their heart to listen to the truth. Father, give them the strength to start seeking you. Amen. He started. He said, "The world can never receive the Holy Spirit because they are not looking for it." Let everyone who believes in you that come across this um, to listen to to start seeking the Holy Spirit, seeking intimacy of the Holy Spirit, and obeying the instruction of the Holy Spirit, knowing that true Christianity is not picking whatever you like. To justify whatever, but it's hearing God in humility and obeying. Father, your mercy for everyone that have been listening to something or that have put his faith in something wrong. Father, change everything. You have the way. You are the best teacher. You know how to do it. Change our ways completely and let them match your ways. Let them match your ways. King of kings, we want to thank you. As you are great God, wonderful God, may your name be glorified. Bless your people. Give them the strength, the inner strength to overcome every challenges that the devil has so or in, into them or all the obstacles the devil put around them for them not to take the little faith to do your will. King of me, I want to thank you because you are great God. May your name be glorified. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you all. Amen. 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 Yeah.